50% of IoT solutions will be provided by startups which are less than three years old by 2019. That's basically you guys. You're going to be the ones that move that whole industry along. So how does it usually work then? How do you go from makerspace to marketplace? Well, it usually starts with somebody having a great idea for a project or something that they want to do. They feel very passionate about an idea and they want to try to realize that. And then they just think up a prototype that if I can put these pieces together, then I'll have something that will do what I want and then from there I can refine it and I can make it into something that's commercially viable. Well, usually what you end up with is something that looks like this. And I'm sure that all of you that have tried it have had this happen to you. It happens to us as well every time that we try to do something for the first time. It's a mess of wires on a desk and it only works unless somebody touches it. But the thing is, for a product to be successful, it has to be you have to be able to industrialize it. You have to be able to reproduce what you did in an environment like this. You know, many, many thousands of units are going to come on an assembly line and they have to work. And for you to be able to do that, you need tools that are sort of aligned with this type of design. And that's basically what we do. So we sell these chips, but we also provide a lot of free tools to engineers to make it possible for them to get their designs from the sort of concept stage to this factory floor as quickly as possible. We do that every day. That's, you know, we, we try to drive people to be successful as quickly as possible in the marketplace. And we have all manners of hardware tools to be able to do that. Especially for Arduino, we've developed a lot of hardware solutions that make it possible to sort of transition from a very general purpose Arduino board over to something that is much more um, let's say application oriented. If what you're doing, for instance, is going to run on a battery, you probably want to take your code and move it to a microcontroller that has low power functionality at some point. We have boards for that. We do, for every device that we launch to the market, we put out um, evaluation platforms that allow people to um, evaluate the specific features, you know, the, the, the core features of that particular family. And we're making it very easy to transition over to our hardware ecosystem. And I'm not saying this to sort of put Arduino boards down in any way. They're awesome. They're great at what they do. But if you want to be able to really um, realize the potential of your design, this is a great way for you to be able to get even further. All of this is available now. And we can show you some really cool things over in our booth. But that's just one piece of the puzzle, right? Hardware is one thing. It's fairly easy for somebody to come up with a board. The software is usually the complicated bit. Hardware without software, car without an engine, right? You can't, it just sits there, it doesn't do anything. And in our experience, if you look over the lifetime of a project, you have about 20% of the time on the hardware design, and then 80% is the software design, trying to get that right. And especially for those of you that work in the Arduino environment and do your prototyping there, it is a fantastic tool. It's really easy to use. You have vast community support, thousands of hardware shields supported. You know, you do, it's sort of a big picture tool in the sense that it's almost, you know, it's not, it's not programming on a very low level. It's very abstracted away from the hardware and it's very easy to get it to do some things. But it also hides some of the low level functionality that somebody will need in order to really, you know, get to the point where they can industrialize the design. It's great for prototypes, proofs, or concepts. We have a lot of customers that use this. They bang something out in a weekend, and then they call us and say, we've done this. Can you help us take it to the next level? Because it's hard. That's what they realize. It's very complicated once you've done this in one environment to move it to another environment and to be able to reuse the effort that you put into getting it to work in the first place. That's where we can help you. Next week, actually on Monday uh, next week, we're going to launch the new version of our Atmos Studio tool. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. This is basically a full-fledged IDE environment. So it's a compiler, linker, debugger. That's the really main concept that the, the Arduino IDE is missing. You can use our tool to do low-level debugging uh, of the microcontrollers, find out what's going on as your application is executing, look at registers, look at everything that's going on in real time 
and Bob is going to show you exactly how that works once I'm done here. But this is something that we're very proud to announce, that we have the next major edition of this coming out. And it's 100% free. It works with all the Apple microcontrollers. You can just go to our site and download it. And we've been working hard on making sure that this new version can import the sketch seamlessly. Right? You basically just point it at the sketch and say, I want this. Our tool will suck in the sketch and all of the libraries that it refers to as a C++ project and then give you access to all of the debugging capabilities in it and all of our software libraries. We have a ton of software libraries in our software framework that you can then add into this sketch to make it do even more. So this is just a screenshot. You'll get a live demo soon of what it looks like after you've done this import. So here, I think this is an Uno sketch originally. You know, we've imported it, we've set up breakpoints, we're looking at registers, we're looking at bits, and you have access to all of the Arduino libraries in our Solution Explorer. So this is something that we think is, is going to be very useful to help people sort of that have done a prototype, they have it working, and they want to try to get to that next level um, to be able to uh, advance the things that they can do. I want to talk about another thing as well, going back to what I said before about software being 80% of the work. And that's another tool that we're going to launch on Monday next week. Actually, it's available now, so if you have a smartphone or some way to get a, a wireless connection, you can go to a start.atmo.com and take a peek at it. This is a software configuration platform that we've rolled out as a web service. It's the first of its kind, really, uh, in our industry, where you're able to go in and say that, I want to do, for my next application, I want it to be able to do these things. And then you browse for an example in our collection, or you'll be able to pick a reference design that we've already created that is similar. Or, you know, if you don't want to start with something that's complete, just pick the board that you're using or even the part that you're going to work with. Click Start, and then you get a graphical configuration environment for your, your entire software stack up, all the way up from the example itself, all the middleware that needs to go in it, all of the drivers, all of the low-level IP drivers, and a very intuitive, easy-to-use um, way to configure these without having to go and refer to a 1,500-page data sheet to get started. The really cool thing about this is that we designed this. There are some tools like this available on the market today, but we decided to take a slightly different approach. Instead of focusing on getting people, uh, to helping people get the sort of low-level device hardware interface set up correctly, we focus more on like a top-down approach. So you can basically use the tool, you can select the high-level functions you want. Say that you want a file system, and I want to use a TCP IP stack, and then I want security on top of that. You pull in those functions as middleware, and it will automatically pull in everything that needs to go underneath to make that work. Allocate all the pins, set up you know, all the inputs and outputs correctly, and assign all these parameters without you really having to worry about it. You can go in after the fact and make changes and make sure that it corresponds to exactly what you needed to do, but the tool will deliver a configuration that works out of the box for you. Also, some other things. This is just you know, some slides with some illustrations of neat functionality. If you've ever worked on an ARM device before, you know that it's a real pain to set up the clocks of that chip. Um, it's a great system for having precise control over all the peripherals, but reading source code that somebody else has written to try to understand exactly how they've done it, that's hard. In our tool, it's graphical. You basically have all your generators, all your clocks, connect them, input the frequency that you need everything to run at, and hit go. Boom, and then you're done. Everything is set up and running. And also, of course, like I said, the low-level interface, right? You need this thing to be able to run on your board. So you can do all your pin mapping and, and everything in a very easy, sort of graphical way, um, set up everything that you need for it to be, and then you're off to the races. All the while you use this tool, you're able to take a look at the code that will be generated. So you always have like a preview page where you can see that, okay, this is what's gonna come out of it. So if you don't wanna take the whole project, maybe you just need two lines to put into your project to activate a DMA channel on this peripheral. You can just copy those two lines from the preview and paste them into your project, and you're good to go. And then once you're done, export it to the IDE that you wanna use. Um, it's completely agnostic as far as uh, tools goes that way. So you just get a bunch of source code, pick the platform that you want to work with, and then you can continue. 
This is also available for all of the Atmel parts. It's free of charge. Just go ahead and try it. I, I, I guarantee you that this is going to make your life easier as far as getting that base software layer in place that your application will need to work. So all right, say that you've gone through all the trouble of creating a prototype and you have something that you're ready now to take to production. Now what? How do I actually reach out? How do I, you know, sitting at my bench, how, what should I start doing in order to be able to connect to a market, to connect to customers? This is actually another area where Atmel can really help you. Um, like I said, we love the maker community and we love marketing good things that the maker community do. We have an extremely large social media footprint or digital marketing footprint, I should say. Um, when we look at, when we compare ourselves with other companies in our industry, we're number one by a very wide margin when it comes to just being able to reach out to people. And, <laughs> and, you know, we are more than happy to make these channels available to you. We want to be able to show people the cool things that people do with Atmel devices. Um, we have a marketing team that loves hearing stories about, you know, what people have done, what people are planning. Also, you know, if there's issues that you run into, contact them, you know. They, they, this is, you know, they can connect you with Atmel engineers that can help you resolve those problems. We want to help make you successful. Uh, if you decided to really try to make something more than just you know, a fun project to work on on a weekend, we want to help you get to a customer base and you know, reach a market. And like I said, we're building out a value proposition for people that are designing using our microcontrollers where we can help you get successful in the market. Also by providing design and engineering support. So we have on our website ways for you to contact Atmel Apps Engineers. If you're using our parts to design something, you're using our tools, they can help you get further or suggest to you things that we've already done. If they've written an application note that is 60% of the way to the application that you're considering, they can point you in that direction. And you'll be able to find code, you'll be able to find hardware schematics, bombs, gerbers, all of that stuff. You can take advantage of it. I said, marketing support, access to ecosystem. We have a very, very broad partner ecosystem in the embedded space for development tools, as well as for software and all of that stuff that can help you. So please reach out to us and show us what it is that you're doing. Um, we love hearing about it and we love amplifying your message to our audience. So with that, my boring slides are over. And now I'm going to hand it over to Bob and let him actually show you some of this cool stuff that you can do with Arduino sketches on real hardware. Thank you very much.